My name is Mr. Ranger, and I'm teaching uh, today a lesson from the Physical Science Pace 1111. And uh, most of the beginning of the pace isn't too hard to understand. There's some good diagrams, and a lot of it's just content to fill in blanks. But then when the math starts in, uh, a lot of times students have some challenges and need a little bit of uh, assistance and help. And that's what I'm here to help you with is uh, a few problems. I'd like, I think this will be most effective if you have read up through page 26 and you're ready to uh, talk about the three laws, Charles Law, Boyle's Law, Gay-Lussac's Law, and then the combined gas law. And then we want to talk about a, a key to keep the, all three of those separate so you don't get them confused and then talk about um, solving problems that involve these gases. So let's start here with <clears throat> comparing these. Now I'm not going to talk about the concept behind the law, the PACE does a good job of that, but where students get confused is trying to remember which is which. And the way I encourage students to memorize this is to associate boil with boiling water, all right, and what do you do when you boil water? You're raising the temperature. So I kind of associate temperature with boil. And in the combined gas law, that's the quantity that you're going to hold constant. Or you're going to ignore it. Or it has nothing to do with solving the problem. So if I come over here to this combined gas law, all right, and I want to figure out which is Boyle's law, I'm going to cover up temperature. So P1V1 equals P2V2 is Boyle's Law. Okay, that's simple. Now when I think of Charles, I always think of Charlie Brown. And he's always under pressure from Lucy, isn't he? And everybody in his life, but especially Lucy. And he's banging his head against the tree, and she's pulling the football out from under him. And uh, she, she really frustrates his life, and he's under a lot of pressure. So if we want to figure out what Charles's law is, we're going to take pressure and pull that out from the combined gas law. So I'm going to cover up pressure. So notice the equation is V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. That is Charles' law. All right? <clears throat> Similarly, the only one left is volume, Gay-Lussac's law. And uh, you can think of your own way of associating, whatever. That's the only one left, okay? Take out the volume, and when you do that, what are you left with? Pressure over temperature on each side, and that is Gay-Lussac's law, all right? So we really only need to memorize one law, the combined gas law, keep track of which of these three quantities we're going to hold constant. Easy way to keep that straight, right? And then we don't have to memorize four different equations. It's really just one simple equation. And if we just memorize this, I always picture the T as kind of being a support system underneath here, all right? And that's holding up the P and the V that are on top. So the T's are on the bottom, P's and V's on the top. Take a mental picture of that, okay? Hold that in your brain, on the whiteboard of your brain. Don't let go of that and uh, keep that as a digital image. And then just keep track of which one to hold constant, and the rest of it should be easy, okay? There actually are several questions on the uh, checkups, on the self-test, on the PACE test, that if you have that memorized in the formula, you'll, you'll pass them all easily, okay? So that was a quick tip. <clears throat> now I want to dive in and solve one type of problem. And we're going to go to page Q, and we could do um, problem 30 or 32, but let's, let's tackle the hardest one, okay, 33. And then once we do 33, I think you can go back and do 31 and 32 fairly easily. Let's figure out what information is given in this problem, okay? It says at zero degrees Celsius and 760 millimeters of mercury, the volume of a quantity of gas is 500 liters. At what temperature Celsius will this gas occupy 583 liters and have a pressure of 740 millimeters of mercury? Okay, so your first read through that, your mind went numb, all those numbers ran together, and you got confused with the units, and you said, I can't do this, this is too hard. So let's break it down. All right, here's our formula. Here's so, so here's the six quantities we're going to solve for, or that we can, are going to be in this problem. What's the question? 
at what temperature Celsius? Ah, all right. That's the question, at what temperature? So I'm looking at all of these and I'm finding the temperature and I'm gonna put a question mark right there. So that's the one we're solving for. Let's go back. It starts off with zero degrees Celsius. All right, so that's temperature, zero degrees Celsius. 760 millimeters of mercury, <clears throat> that's pressure. And a quantity of 500 liters. Now, if you get water, you maybe get water in, uh, or soda, let's say, soda in a two liter bottle. Okay, liter is the amount of space taken up in that container. So, liters is volume. And of course, you know Celsius is temperature. Millimeters of mercury, yeah, that's kind of a weird way to measure pressure, but it's very common in, in science. So, we got to live with it, all right? Um, then it says we're going to change the volume to be 583 and we're going to change the pressure to be 740 millimeters of mercury and this was liters. Now, if you read your pace carefully, you probably noticed, hopefully you did, that we cannot solve these problems using Celsius for temperature. We always have to change Celsius into Kelvin, all right? And the way we do that is we add 273 to the Celsius temperature. So we're going to actually write this as 273. And an interesting note, we don't say degrees Kelvin, it's just 273 Kelvins, okay? When we find our final answer, then the answer will be in Kelvin. And we're going to have to take that answer and subtract 273 because they want the answer in Celsius. Now, to solve for temperature, we could just right away take these numbers and plug in and solve. I find it easier, though, to first figure out a formula for the temperature. All right? So let's cross multiply P1, V1, T2 equals T1, P2, V2. All I did was take this times this equals this times this. That's a neat trick that we know from math. Always works, okay? Cross products are always equal to each other. Now, since I'm solving for the final temperature, this is a little algebra one, okay? We're gonna divide by P1 and V1 over here. And I have to do the same thing over here, P1 and V1. So T2 is going to equal, and what I'm going to do is set this up, because I'm going to go back and plug in my numbers. All right. T1, let's look in the list. Ta-da, 273. P2, look at the list. P2, 740. V2, that's the 583. P1 is 760. <clears throat> and V1 is 500. Now, I'm going to let you finish the math yourself, but I'm going to give you a, a clue here, right? Listen carefully. A lot of times students get this wrong because they don't use their calculator correctly, all right? If you take your calculator and you do this times this times this, and then you hit the divide key and you do 760, and then you hit the times key, times 500, you're going to get it wrong. Because we are supposed to be dividing by the product of both of these. Here's the way to do this to always get it right. And there's other, there's other tricks, other ways you could use your calculator, but here's what I would recommend you do. Take these three numbers, multiply them together, write that down in your pace, okay? So all of this really should be written down in your pace. So multiply these out, write that number down. Draw your line, multiply these two numbers together, write that number, and then take the top number and divide by the bottom number. When you do that, you're gonna get the right answer. Now. Just a reminder, when you do that, <clears throat> you are probably going to get 
a number with a decimal, and uh, if you will go to the score key, your, your answer may not match exactly, and they're going to have the answer rounded off. And you're going to say, why? I don't get this. How come they have a different answer than I do? I, I, I set it up the right way. So here's what, here's what happens. Way back in pace 1109, at the beginning of the course, you did a pace about significant figures. And all the way through, they keep applying the rules of significant figures to the math problems. By this point, you may have forgotten those rules. And it's up to your supervisor whether they want you to go back and review those and keep applying those. What I recommend for my students is that once they have figured this out and they've set it up and they've done the math and they get to the final answer, if they look in the score key right before the answer that's in bold print, okay, the answer should be there. Once it's in the solution guide, it shows how to set up the problem, how to solve it, and their answer is usually right there, and then in bold print is the answer rounded off. If you have the right answer, be confident that you did it correctly, okay? Don't get frustrated that you didn't follow significant digits and get the answer that's in bold. Now, maybe it'd be good, all right? Maybe your supervisor wants you to go back, review those rules, and round the answer off correctly. But sometimes students end up marking the whole page wrong, and we go back and look at it, and all it was was significant digits, and they really did know what they were doing, okay? So don't get frustrated. And when you solve this and you get to your last step, remember, that's the temperature in Kelvin. And when we come back over here, we have to subtract 273, and that'll take us back to the Celsius temperature, okay? So we just did the hardest problem here on page Q. Um, I'm going to shut this off and start a new video to talk about a couple of problems on page R and S that I know students often struggle with. All right, so we'll see you back in a few minutes.